Now that we know that we're looking for an incident, a transmitted, and a reflected wave, let's write the equations of the electric field and the magnetic field in both of our boundaries. Let's first consider the transmitted, the transmitted wave. The wave has a direction of propagation in the z direction as we saw before. The electric field is polarized in the x direction, so it is ex in the x direction. Since this is the incident field, let's put an i up there. The magnetic field is coming out of the board, so the magnetic field is h, y, we put an incident there also in the y direction. In the region number one, this is region number one, this is region number two, we're also going to have the reflected wave. The reflected wave has a direction of propagation in the minus z direction. The electric field is polarized as before, the x in the x direction. I'm putting an r there for reflected field. The magnetic field this time is into the board, so the magnetic field is h, y in the y direction, except now it's the minus y direction, and that's also reflected field. The electric field in this region, in region number one, can be written as the incident field plus the reflected field. Let's put reflected right here, incident right there. So this is going to be equal to E x incident in the x direction, and it's propagating into the e to the minus gamma z. The reflected field is E r, also in the x direction, e to the plus gamma z. Now we know what gamma is. That's the propagation constant. Gamma is alpha plus j beta. So this term becomes e to the minus alpha z, e to the minus j beta z. For plane waves, another term that we use for beta is k. Notice that this k does not have a vector over it. It's a constant that means beta. k is also going to depend on which region we're in, so this is k1. k is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda, just like beta was. So k and beta are different terms, but generally we use k for plane waves. So I can rewrite this electric field equation as E x incident in the x direction, E to the minus alpha z, E to the minus j beta or k z, uh, plus E x reflected, also in the x direction, E to the minus alpha z, plus alpha z, E to the plus j beta z. So there is my electric field uh, in region number one. Let's replace beta with k1. Just for consistency, there's my term. If I have a lossy region, this is showing me that my electric field is attenuating. This is changing the magnitude. This is the phase shift that's happening because of my wave propagating. The reflected field, this looks like it's getting bigger as it moves to the left, but actually it's traveling in the minus z direction, so this term ends up being negative, and this wave also decreases as it moves through the, through the boundary. This right here, again, is a phase shift term. Now we've been able to write the, the, um, we've been able to write the equation for the electric field, now let's also write the equation for the magnetic field. The magnetic field, also in that same region, is equal to h, y, incident, in the y direction, e to the minus gamma z plus h y reflected in the minus y direction, e to the plus gamma z. Again, gamma is alpha plus j beta, so we get a term that is h y incident in the y direction, e to the minus alpha z, e to the minus j beta z, plus h y reflected in the y direction. Now because of that minus sign, I'm going to bring the minus sign out front here, e to the plus alpha z, e to the plus j beta z. Now there are two magnitudes that we don't know in this relationship. 
One of them is the incident and reflected field, like this. And another is the relationship between the electric and the magnetic fields. So the next thing we're going to do is evaluate those magnitudes.